More than $50 billion is on its way to state and local governments to address the opioid epidemic. The settlement money comes from companies that made or distributed prescription painkillers, well-known companies like Purdue Pharma, CVS, and Walgreens, and others like Mallinckrodt, McKesson, and Cardinal Health. And it's arriving at a time when more than 200 Americans are dying of drug overdoses each day. A lot of people see these funds as a way to reverse the trend and help millions who are suffering from addiction. But why are the companies paying, and will the money actually make a difference? Let's start with a brief backstory on how we got here. In the 1990s, pharmaceutical companies started heavily marketing opioids for pain relief. They said the pills weren't addictive, but that wasn't true, and lots of patients got hooked. Over time, as regulators cracked down on painkillers, people moved to other opioids like heroin and fentanyl, which are even more lethal. State and local governments have been struggling to address the epidemic. More than 4,000 of them sued the drug manufacturers, distributors, and pharmacies that they say sparked the crisis. Many of these companies agreed to settle rather than go through a full trial. Some settlements are still being finalized, but it's estimated the total payout will top $54 billion, the second largest settlement in American history. What was the first? Well, that was the tobacco settlement of the 90s, when states sued cigarette companies in one hundreds of billions. But instead of going to anti-smoking programs, a lot of that money was used to plug state budget gaps and even subsidize tobacco farmers. So that brings us to the next big question. Will the opioid settlement money actually make a difference or will that get misdirected too? Here's the good news. The opioid settlements specifically say 85% of the money must be spent on addressing the epidemic. But there's a lot of variation in what that could mean. For example, Rhode Island is using $2 million to start a site where people can use drugs under supervision to prevent them from overdosing. Meanwhile, Louisiana is giving more than $65 million to its local sheriff's offices to support law enforcement efforts. City and county governments are receiving a portion of funds too. Some want that to go toward housing for people who are homeless and use drugs. Others say it should go to drug awareness programs in school or to grandparents who are raising grandchildren because the parents died of overdoses. Rehab facilities and other private companies are also lobbying for the cash. So there's a lot of money and a lot of potential uses. But tracking it is hard because most state and local governments have different processes for spending it. That's where we come in. Through our year-long project, we're tracking how state and local governments use and misuse the settlement cash. You can find our reporting at kffhealthnews.org.